What an amazing job on that finale. It was absolutely incredible. So funny. I uh, had my jaw on the floor. And this is what I love about She-Hulk, right? From its tone to its comedy and, and, and its bingeability. Um, it feels like I was able to take a breath in the MCU while all the other uh, action was going on. Um, but the first question I have for you is, has Jen finally accepted both parts of herself? And where do we see her go next? I think she absolutely has. And that's part of how the ending is crafted. Um, you know, you see her at the barbecue in the most human way you can see her with her parents, with, you know, her romantic interest. And then you go to her on the court steps in her She-Hulk form, um, kind of serving attitude. And she's comfortable in both realms, which is the arc of the season. Absolutely. Now, I have to ask about Kevin because that was blowing up the internet uh, yesterday. Uh, what was Kevin Feige's initial re reaction to the pitch of Kevin? I mean, Kevin Feige has a lot to do with the existence of KEVIN. And, you know, it's funny because I was probably the most nervous about like throwing the Marvel <laughs> stuff under the bus and poking fun at Kevin. And to my great you know, shock and surprise. He was the one who was like, no, this is great. This is fun and go further. Um, and, and I think it speaks to what makes Marvel so special, which is they are self-deprecating. Nothing is precious. And they're so connected to the audience. Like anything negative you can lob at them, they know what you're saying. And this kind of, you know, goes one step ahead of anybody who's got criticisms. I wanted, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about next. Now, was it always the plan to have toxic fandom as the season's villain? And can you talk to me about the irony of seeing that play out in the real world while knowing uh, it was about, it was, the, it was the big bad of the season? Well, I'll say the writers are so connected to the Twitterverse. And so, you know, they crafted this big bad that was the toxic fan base. I am not on Twitter, I'm only on Instagram. So I hadn't experienced it in the way they had. Um, but when the show came out, I started getting these really nasty messages and just stuff you can't even imagine. Right. Um, but I, I kind of took it with a grain of salt because I knew where we were going. And what I noticed is that the criticism started petering out because I think even the trolls realized that by being nasty and negative, they're playing right into our hands, thereby proving that we are intelligent, which is the thing they don't want to admit that we ladies are. And I, that was so, so smart. It's kind of fun, you know? Absolutely. Uh, what, what was your favorite critique uh, during the season that you saw? Um, oh my gosh. You know, the ones that we guessed were gonna happen. Like, why are we turning all the superheroes into women? We like, as if she wasn't a comic book character who existed since 1980. Like, right. as if we just decided we were gonna make a female Hulk and it wasn't Stan Lee. Um, and that was something that would just make me giggle when I'd see it early on, because I knew we were gonna, we have episodes where we directly address it. Absolutely. Now, uh, I heard on the Phase Zero podcast that there were multiple versions of the finale shot. Can you talk to me about some of the finales that we didn't get a chance to see? Well, it was a lot about her balancing, you know, that human um, form versus the She-Hulk form and how did we want to end and vacillating, you know, do you want to see her as a human being who's planning her career, you know, as a human? Um, do you want to see her as She-Hulk embarking on even more heightened superhero stories that maybe don't take place, you know, on our planet? Um, and, you know, and so ultimately it came down to exactly what you pinpointed, which is like, let's see her at her most human and then let's see her operating in the human world in her larger form. Right, right. Now, uh, Daredevil, I'm going to talk about uh, episode eight real quick. Daredevil really changes things when he uh, gets introduced to Jen. Uh, she really finds the balance between being a superhero and being a lawyer. It's the first time she's really able to see it. Um, can you talk to me about uh, how that changes Jen moving forward? Well, you know, she encounters these characters who have gone through things similar to her, you know, first with Bruce and then with the abomination and then with Daredevil. And he is the most appealing version, you know, because he has crafted this life where he is a lawyer, which is what she wants, but he does serve the greater good, which is something that she has, you know, shoved away because if you look at Bruce and Abomination, it's not a very appealing lifestyle. And so right. I think Daredevil is the first time she's like, oh, there, there, there could be something to this. 
Um, and he, you know, not by lecturing her or mansplaining to her, but just by existing kind of models a, a different way of balancing the two sides of self. Right now, uh, in that episode as well, Daredevil's been uh, in his MCU or, or superhero career for a little bit of time now. And this is our first time really seeing She-Hulk do the same thing. Can you talk to me about their different fighting styles as heroes? Yes, I mean, Daredevil is so finely tuned. He has been fighting for so long. You know, he is an expert stuntman. And, you know, as is Charlie from having done his show for so long, um, but he's very human and he doesn't have superpowers. And right. like when, you know, when we have this little moment where they jump out of the building, it was fun. We had, you know, Daredevil hold on to She-Hulk's arm because he's just a man. Um, and then she has these superhuman powers, but she's never honed them. You know, the most she's ever done is her little training montage with Bruce, which she did not take seriously. So she's very much more like smash the wall, throw some people around. Um, and, and so it's fun. And I, I think that that chemistry is part of what makes them this odd couple who are obviously meant for each other. You know, I think seeing some of these MCU actors, uh, in, in this comedic tone is a game changer. I absolutely love it. Can you talk to me about what it's like working with these established MCU actors like Mark Ruffalo, Tim Roth, Benedict Wong, Charlie Cox in this new comedic format? Well, they're all such skilled actors that it wasn't like, oh, I have to school them on how to do comedy. Sure. But what I did have to do was allow them um, the space to go further than they are used to in these characters. And that was kind of like with, with Mark, with Wong, with Tim, with Charlie, like on their first day, they would kind of go, wait, is this, am I going too far? And my answer would always be like, absolutely not. Go, go so far that you think you've broken the MCU and then I'll rein you back if I need to. And as soon as they got that permission, it was like, it was seamless. Well, Kat, thank you so much for your time. This was an incredible series, the most bingeable Marvel Studios Disney Plus series. It's incredible. I absolutely loved it. But thank you for your time. And I can't wait to see where She-Hulk goes next. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.